Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the West Valley School District Board meeting for Tuesday, May 24th at 7 p.m. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order, but we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the flag for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And actually, before we would get going here, I'd like to, uh, um, in recognition of what happened this afternoon in, in uh, Uval, Texas, take a moment of silence for maybe 60 seconds and show a sympathy and support for those students and that community who just suffered a great loss this evening. So let's begin 60 seconds. Okay, thank you. And again, um, great, great loss, great sadness. And our hearts go out to the Rob Elementary School and staff and students who were lost today. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Changes to the agenda. Um, Dr. Finch, if you have any, I do have one, but I'll let you go first if you have any. I have no changes to the agenda. We also do need a motion to excuse Mr. Moko and Mr. Thorner from tonight's meeting. Okay, you beat me to the punch. <laughs> all right, uh, we have a motion to approve. We'll go ahead and vote. We do have a quorum tonight. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All same sign. Okay, that motion carries. Um, the change I would like to make to the agenda is uh, item number 9A, budget development, um, staffing, and so forth. Uh, a couple of the board members who are very active in that particular segment of our the responsibilities aren't here tonight. And one of them, in fact, made a request that we could hold that to the next meeting. So I would like to table that to the next meeting. There's no objection from the other board members. No. Okay, we'll move on to item. Item number of communications. Uh, so Dr. Finch, I'll turn it over to you for a response to public comment. All right, during the public comment section of the school board meeting on May 10th, there were numerous comments regarding the first reading of district policy 3211 for gender inclusive schools. Many of those comments have asked our district lawyer to review. Uh, many of them were suggestions uh, for the policy and procedures. Uh, there was also um, a question that was asked about the use of ESSER funds for uh, remodel of facilities. And I was not able to get an answer for that in time for the board packet. So we're still working on uh, getting the answer to that question. Do have this response uh, that the administration has acted on a suggestion that was made during public comment from the May 10th meeting. Uh, the facilities department will post the following information at the entrance to the public restrooms in the schools and that is, quote, a private restroom is available in the school office, close quote. So we appreciate that suggestion from the public at the comment, and we have already acted on that. And that's all the response to public comment that we have at this time. Okay, thank you. So we do have item 5B, staff retirement uh, recognition. All right, well, first I'd like to, uh, I was contacted that Renee Hennessy and Helen Sorrells will not be able to join us this evening. And also, I would like to share that uh, 
the family of Sandra Hennessy had requested that we bring the um, plaque for his, uh, Sandy to the hospital last week, and we were able to do that. And then uh, Sandy has been uh, was battling cancer for many years, and uh, we did receive word that Sandy had passed has passed away that she passed away last Thursday. So we were able to give her that recognition in the hospital, and we sure appreciate Sandy's years of service for the district and. Our thoughts and prayers are with the family, of course, and on all of our staff members that work closely with Sandy as well. So we appreciate Sandy's service and, and we definitely um, would like to recognize her this evening. And then um, the staff members that we do have in uh, attendance this evening that we have a plaque for, uh, we'd like to have them come up at this time. So it's Jim Lane and Peggy Schwarzenberger and Pam Stonecipher. So come on up. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Here's my hand shake here. Thank you for Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so again, we thank Jim and Pam for their service for many years here in West Valley. Jim is custodian at some of you, and Pam is tenant secretary at the middle school. So appreciate all the years of service. And next, we'd like to recognize the West Valley Citizens for Better Schools. So we'd like to have all these people here come forward. It's Ricky Cooper, Ryan Matthews, Michael Moore, Michelle Mueller, Jerry Prescott, and Tressa Ross Shockley. So please come up to the stage and we'll recognize you. So as they're coming up, I'll share that the Washington Association of School Administrators uh, works with school districts to recognize community organizations each year that have made a positive impact on the schools. And so this plaque is from WASA, Washington Association of School Administrators, to the West Valley Citizens for Better Schools in recognition of outstanding community leadership and contributions to the improvement of public education. So we sure appreciate all the work that our Citizens for Better Schools did uh, to promote the schools and to promote the importance of our levy that was recently passed for four years. And um, just really appreciate all the extra time and effort that all these citizens and, and other members of the West Valley Citizens for Better Schools appreciate all that they did to sh share with the community how important this local levy is. So thank you so much. I'd like to give them a hand. Auto off here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, we'll 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 Come shake hands. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Oh, yeah, Heather Harrison. Okay, again, uh, I just again want to reiterate and appreciation for the West Valley Citizens for Better Schools. They have um, through the years, and it seems how quickly that's gone by, they have just been a big supporter and contributor to the success of the school district. So thank you again. All right, moving on to item number six, public comment of non-discussion agenda items. Again, just a reminder, um, board will not respond. Uh, you have 30, um, we'll have 30 minutes at max and 30, I'm sorry, three minutes per person to speak. So I will go, alternate between the, those in person and anyone that is uh, attending via Zoom. So first, start with Carol Blevins.
Good evening. Um, I all, I wanted to make what well, kind of a question, suggestion, uh, still on the gender inclusion that we were talking about last week. And I was wondering um, if we are contacting other school districts and school boards in the state, because we are all going, uh, you know, this is happening to all of us. And uh, so, uh, you know, with this, this impact of this law, and I was wondering if, if the school board needs help, maybe they can put a group of parents together to investigate what strategies other school districts and uh, school boards are using to push back on this. So that was one of my suggestions. Um, you know, I think because it's, it's endangering all our students. I, I was just thinking about my grandson when he was in high school, a transgending um, boy, he came on to my son and my son was really, really upset about it. And I think, so I think it's endangering everybody. I think the, the ones that are transgending or whatever, I can't say, um, they're, they're, they're gonna, there's kids that don't uh, understand it. They don't really believe in it or whatever you wanna say. And they're, they're, they're gonna be in danger in a bathroom also with kids that uh, maybe are even to the point of being hostile with them. Like my, my son, my grandson, when this person showed a interest in him. So um, I would su suggest that maybe we find out some more strategies here that they're using um, because, well, I like this quote and this is a quote from uh, Benjamin Franklin. And it says, if we do not hang together, we shall surely hang apart, hang separately. Because I think if we all push back together, they'll realize this, this isn't gonna work. Um, I think that we've gotten this spot is because we've been compliant. And I think maybe we should use a new strategy, non-compliant. And that's what I have today. Uh, thank you very much for your comment. I will check to see if there's anyone via Zoom. No comments via Zoom. All right, we will go to the next person on the list. Heather Harrison. Evening. I have uh, two children in the school district. I just wanted to first off, I wanted to thank Dr. Finch and the board for adding the wording um, primary stakeholders to policy 4129 at the last board meeting. But many of us would still like you to pass the resolution, parent, making parents the primary stakeholders of their children's education. As you know, many community members and parents asked for you to pass the resolution that was presented at the board meeting on April 26th. It's my understanding that parents are the only ones who have come up with a safe plan for the high school bathrooms for, for the gender inclusive policy. And I am thankful for their time and effort in coming up with a plan. We parents can bring solutions to the table. At the last board meeting, Mr. Mogul challenged parents to become primary stakeholders. And I think that's why we are all here. <laughs> we have accepted that challenge and we want to be considered the primary stakeholder holders of our children's education. So I would like to throw a challenge back to Mr. Board to affirm parents as the primary stakeholders and pass the resolution along with policy 4129. At the last few board meetings, I have heard all board members state that they are listening to our comments, reading our emails, and then our comments are not falling on deaf ears. But I sent each board member an email about the gender inclusive policy over a month ago and specifically asked for a response. I only received one response from one board member. Please start showing us that you are listening by responding to emails and passing the resolution, making parents the primary stakeholders in their children's education. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Again, checking anybody via Zoom. All right, no other Zoom comments or 
and Zoom attendance comments. So I'll go to the next person on the list. Anna Dahl. Good evening, Mr. Myers, Mr. Thorner, Mr. Jager, and Mr. Finch. Is that all who's here? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start off by thanking you as well and adding in your adding that families are primary stakeholders um, in the family involvement policy. While my request, well, our request was that you recognize the entire proclamation that Heather and I presented for parents that we are associated with in our community, West Valley District, um, and that the city recognized. Um, I'm thankful for the reason and longevity that you saw doing so inside the policy. Tonight, I wanna read a, I would like to read a quote that I like to remind myself often in my day to day and often remind my children. The moms and dads I'm associated with regarding our district remind me of this when I'm feeling bad about things going on here. And so I just want us to all keep this in mind, especially when one of the board members tried to lay conditions down before recognizing that we are the primary stakeholders of our children's lives. Here's the quote. We judge others by their actions and ourselves by our intentions. I'll just read it again. We judge others by their actions and ourselves by our intentions. And I think we can all try to reverse that in everything that we do on a day to day. I wanna see you guys' intentions and I hope that you do the same when we're coming up here and talking to you guys every other week. I wanna partner with you. I think we can all keep this in our front pocket when discussing our precious children as Mr. Mokul said, we moved into this district with Cottonwood in mind, this district in mind. I helped in my daughter's class nearly every single Friday, first two years. We all knew, we all know that some of us were not permitted the last two years. So here I am, wondering how someone could be so bold to lay conditions down before they recognize me as her primary stakeholder. Every teacher she has had, we still show our gratitude, thankfulness, and love towards those special ladies that impacted those moments of her life. For example, every day during Teacher Appreciation Week, present and past teachers each had a small game. My action in helping her do this was to give her lasting, uh, the lasting lesson of gratitude, kindness, joy, love, while using her creativity. I don't just wait for those planned appreciation weeks either. Her past and present teachers often get gratitude treats. Please let no mistake be made tonight about my actions as my child, children's mother. Please let no mistake be made about the primary I know you see us as a family and you give us parents who do not have heart, this locomotive that feels like it's heading towards us. Parents are your biggest ally. We are not to be shut out. That may be accomplished from such a position because our children will die sure to be There are more parents out there than we than we realize than we realize. I don't underestimate how hard it must be to be a teacher. The attitudes of joy and angst that you walk through with some of these kids. I have my images in my perception that I'm sure you do. So I challenge you as well tonight and I submit to you to get again tonight 
the ethnic origins recognize that we are the primary stakeholders of our community. Because we made this happen and we have the keys at the table. I ask you to take another 10 seconds and wrap up, please. Thank you. Okay, I will check one last time to see if there are any Zoom participants that wish to speak. Okay, all right, hearing none. Thank you all for your comments. I will make one comment here. Um, just an action I took after our last board meeting. I did reach out to one of our state representatives and ask them if they could do or introduce a bill to do something to help with some of the funding necessary to carry out some of their mandates that they um, that they uh, pass in Olympia. So he's going to try and make put together a bill and see if something happens. But I just wanted you to know that there are things that happen behind the scene that sometimes we just don't you don't hear often about, but those are some of the steps that we do take. And we hope that, at least I do, that something will come out of that, that call. All right, moving on to program presentation. Dr. Finch, um, I believe that's with you, uh, equity and inclusion. All right, so back at the beginning of the school year, uh, the board has established equity as a goal for the district uh, that we needed to identify areas that we could improve in, the, in both equity and inclusion. And so we had a work group uh, that met throughout the year. Uh, we came up with uh, suggestions for strategies that we would implement in the upcoming school year. I took those suggestions out to the schools and got feedback from staff by going to uh, faculty meetings at each of the schools. And then also um, we continue to have the meetings with the work group throughout the year. And so I wanted to share where we're at. Uh, you know, we're still can make changes to this if, if the board had some ideas that they wanted to uh, see incorporated, but I'd like to share where we're at at this point in time. And I'll start first with our vision for next year, which is the same vision for this year, that with student ownership for learning, each student will experience success every day. And that we have this action plan for the upcoming year. I'll share uh, this information and audience members, uh, your, there's a front and back sheet there that you could have as you came in, it was by the agendas and, and I'm gonna go over this right now. After I'm done uh, sharing this information on the sheet, then we'll, we'll have a presentation uh, from Rick Griffith and uh, Jenna Leverton, they're eighth grade science teachers and they are doing this work of universal design for learning. And um, they are, um, they've been doing uh, trainings with our staff in the past to share how they, um, choice into the classroom. And so we're going to have a presentation after I get done with this. So for me, the universal design for learning is providing students choice. So it's choice on how they access the content, choice on how they monitor their progress and their goal setting in the class, and then choice on how they show what they know. And so this universal design for learning is a way that we will be able to have inclusion and equity in our classrooms next year. And we're already, it's not like we're starting from the ground zero. We have lots of good work happening in our classrooms. And so we'll have uh, Rick and Jenna will share that with you here in a moment. Uh, for the action plan, uh, that's on this side of the page. So we want to continue with equity and inclusion, have student voice and choice. So the student choice, I just talked about that. Uh, foundation learning is relationships and having relevance in the classroom, maintaining high rigor, and then time for reflection by the students on their learning and reflection for our teachers as practitioners. On the left-hand column here, we have the different uh, levels of, in our school system. So the pre-K initiative, we wanna continue to expand what we're doing and partner with community organizations to increase early learning support for families with young children, birth to age three. And so we have partnerships with EPIC uh, and they've, they're committed to applying for early ECAP funding, which would expand services birth to age three. For our elementary level, we want to implement the badge book at grade two. We've been piloting it this year. So next year we want a badge book where students have ownership for their learning in pre-K, kinder, first and second grade. 
and we want to develop the batch book next year for grade three. So next year would be a development and pilot year with implementation the following year. At our mid-level campus, we want to deepen staff understanding of learning standards and standards-based assessment and assist early adopters of the Empower Learning Management System. So this is the learning management system we're using at the Innovation System this year and Center this year. And this is, we learned about that when we went on a site visit to Lindsay, California, which is a performance-based system. So we'll have early adopters next year using that at the mid-level campus and we'll support them in this early adopter phase. At the Innovation Center, we wanna have a successful launch of the robotics agri-science pathway. And we certainly appreciate all the community partners that have already stepped up and are interested in supporting that program. And I appreciate uh, Russ Tuman and Jed Waters and their work to have that outreach to community partners. And we already have had donations of robotics. And so we're already on a good start there for launching that new pathway. At the high school, we wanna expand building-based support for staff members to implement universal design for learning. This year, we've had Josh McKimmy release part-time so that he can assist teachers with instructional coaching. Next year, we'll free up uh, Jamie Nordstrom to help with math and science as well. So, uh, you know, having Josh McKimmy as one person part-time stretched across the whole staff is a lot to ask. And so Josh will be able to focus more on humanities, English language arts, social studies, and Jamie Nordstrom will be able to focus on math and science. We want to continue to increase interventions to assist students for on-track graduation. Uh, Mr. McMurray had shared in his board report uh, the plans for doing that. And then also at high school, we'd like to analyze the data from the Center for Educational Effectiveness and develop action plans to address the focus areas. And they plan to do that in their August building directed optional time, analyze the data, and then set plans for the year based on that data. For all schools, Jed Waters has a vision that I support 100%, and that's to develop a portrait of a graduate for West Valley. Uh, this will be a way that we can unify, such as uh, problem solvers. So we can have that all throughout our system, and we want our graduates to be problem solvers. So that would be an example, but we'd like to pull together uh, parents and teachers, uh, students when appropriate, uh, through them, and uh, develop a portrait of a graduate for West Valley. And then for all schools, continue our work with professional learning communities where teachers are working together to build that collective efficacy, working together to, to uh, be more effective as a team, have high expectations for student achievement, continue to support student ownership for learning and student agency, and then support this universal design for learning, which I talked about previously. We also know the importance of social emotional foundations for learning and having positive behavior interventions and support. So we'll continue that. And we want to have family-friendly schools and culturally responsive classrooms, continue to support family engagement and community partnerships, and have that continuous improvement mindset. And our end goal is to have our students be lifelong learners, including ourselves as staff members. For equity and inclusion, uh, that'll be on the flip side here that we'll talk about implementing activities for <coughs> professional development, human resources, safe schools, student engagement, family engagement, community and data analysis. Uh, for the district, I know a goal that we have is to develop a plan for the remaining funds from the recent construction projects. There may be some other areas that the board would like to see some goals in, and so I left some space there for the future if we have some additional goals. For communications, we want to continue to promote transparent and timely communications. Uh, use netpromoter.com to identify strengths and areas for improvement. Improve the district website based on feedback ensure that students and staff at every school are recognized periodically. So uh, Amy Forrest has done a nice job of having a schedule where every school is recognized on a periodic basis and we wanna continue that. If we look at the flip side for equity and inclusion, uh, there was a, a request that we have a real easy to understand definition for each of those. So equity is providing each student the support that they need to be successful. And we kind of talked about the difference between equal and equity. So equality is providing all students the same. Equity is providing students what they need. I think used in early learning was, uh, we have a jump start to kindergarten summer school program, but does every student need that? There are a lot of students that are already uh, at the kindergarten readiness standards. Their families have been working with their kids at home and those kids are at the readiness standards already for kindergarten, but there may be some other students that need additional support. And so we provide that jump start to kindergarten to provide each student the support that they need. Inclusion is providing access to the core curriculum for each student in the least restrictive environment. 
And so that basically means as much as possible in the regular classroom, have students have access to the core curriculum. So we're not pulling students out of the classroom, but we're pushing adults into the classroom. And so having that idea of least restrictive environment, that's uh, actually a legal term. And that basically means as much as possible having students in the regular classroom so they have access to the core curriculum. Strategies for next year, we've really learned a lot from the pandemic that our professional development have to be in person, that we can have virtual training such as Zoom, and we can have asynchronous training where people do online modules on their own pace. And so next year for professional development, we wanna have all three. We wanna have in-person professional development for the universal design for learning, have that at our professional development days and our early release days. We wanna have Zoom after school to have cultural proficiency in our after school seminars. We'll do those on Thursdays after school. And we wanna have uh, asynchronous opportunities where staff can go on into the Safe Schools Equity and Inclusion trainings that are online modules and they can complete those on their own time. For human resources, we wanna continue to partner with Yakima Valley College to support a pipeline of diverse educators. We wanna schedule outreach to our paraeducators so they know about that program and they can be in that pipeline. And we wanna recruit bilingual candidates to increase the candidate pool for staff positions. For safe schools, we wanna have high expectations for student behavior across all schools. At the high school, we wanna use Ramstrong as a way to improve our safe learning environment, empower bystanders to see something, say something, when they see someone who's subjected to harassment, intimidation, or bullying. Student, oh, I guess I should, I forgot that to mention that I also shared this uh, with a focus group of high school students. I had two focus groups that Mr. McMurray and I met with during first lunch and second lunch throughout the year. And uh, this the reason I was reminded is that they, they were the ones saying, we need to make sure that we empower students to speak up when they see something, to say something to an adult who can take action and create a safe environment for our students. Uh, student engagement, we talked, uh, the parents had shared that, you know, we have after school activities at the mid-level campus. We have lots at the high school, um, but as we move to the elementary school this year, uh, they like to. They saw that as a gap, and that we want to uh, have more inclusion of students after school and after school at the elementary level. Uh, um, ideas to have robotics. We have a meeting coming up with First Robotics of Washington State. They've actually placed a staff member in Yakima now, and so there's support for doing robotics after school. We could even have a competition. We could have the six elementary schools as a part of that, and some of our neighboring schools uh, in other districts. So there's a good opportunity there. Inviting community members to assist with the after school activities. So this is an, another thing to uh, continue to encourage our schools to reach out and have partnerships with the community. And so there's after school activities such as robotics, we could have community members assist with that as well. Uh, partner with community agencies to provide mentors for secondary students. So we have actually already reached out and uh, have had a meeting with Safety Yakima Valley. They have a mentor program. And we're going to start with our focus at the mid-level campus so we can be proactive and provide mentors for our mid-level students. We do have a graduation success coordinator at the high school. So uh, we do have someone uh, serving as a mentor in high school. And so we'd like to partner with Safety Yakima Valley to have mentors at the mid-level campus. And then we already talked previously about eliminating pay to participate fees. So that's being more inclusive by eliminating that barrier for kids. And uh, we had already shared with the board our plans to put that, you know, with, with the board approval to put that into the budget for the next school year. For family engagement, we wanna to continue to have meetings where we can check in with the work group and share the work that's happening in our data analysis for equity and inclusion. We wanna to continue to provide second language classes for adults. And then there's also the community plaza, which is uh, work that Minerva Pardo has done where there's online curriculum for free for adult education to help them build their basic skills so that eventually they could be prepared to do a GED program. So appreciate Minerva's work as our family engagement coordinator to get that free curriculum into place for our parents. Uh, we wanna continue to educate parents oh, at the mid-level campus and then just more than a one night uh, event. We need to have ongoing uh, training for parents so they know about the different uh, opportunities that we have at our high school. Uh, there's just so much going on academically at the high school with our college and the high school classes, with our registered apprenticeship opportunities. So it needs to be more than a, a one night event. We need to have ongoing information. So as students move from the mid-level campus to the high school, 
the, the parents are involved with the course selection and, and know the different opportunities there are. And then pr for providing technology training, so parents know how to use Skyward, we've actually uh, seen that happening here in the spring. We've had at the Innovation Center, students are providing tutoring to parents uh, on how to use the technology. And more than just Skyward, they've been doing the full uh, data processing, um, spreadsheets, and um, presentation software. So lots of amazing things happening there with parent education. And that's at two nights in English, two nights in Spanish. So lots of good work happening that. And we'll continue that next year. For community engagement, we want to provide activities at the schools to bring the community together. We want to host activities that provide opportunities for all ages to come together. And a great example is this, this past Saturday at the high school here, the music program, both uh, instrumental and vocal music, had a jazz evening. It started at five o'clock and I heard it went to nine and people didn't get home till 10. There was just lots of activities happening uh, with young children being able to have face paint and fun games and all the different performance groups. So it was a great turnout here. And a good example of how we could bring the community together especially we're talking about after uh, the pandemic, how can we come back together and really build the community of West Valley? And so also part of that would be partnering with our community-based service organizations for collective impact. So not having it just the school, but bringing uh, our, all of our various community-based organizations to, to assist bringing that uh, community back together for West Valley. And then finally, data analysis. We wanna make sure that we're always doing program analysis. So we wanna uh, expand our data to have perceptual data from all groups, students, staff, and families. That's something that's lacking right now. And we wanna make sure we continue to disaggregate data to identify any differences among subgroups. So that's the work that we had of the work group and feedback from all the various stakeholders. And so um, at this time, uh, I'd like to focus on the uh, design for learning. That's a way that we'll make sure that students are able to access core curriculum in the classroom as much as possible. And so I'm going to ask the board to go ahead and join the audience, and we'll have Mr. Griffith and Ms. Leverton come up and do a short presentation. The terms personalized learning, universal design for learning, and blended learning are all buzzwords in education the last few years. These words can make educators feel like they need to redesign the entire way they teach. However, with small changes and intentionality, classrooms can become places of total engagement for all students. In February of 2020, grade science team decided to follow district directives and align our curriculum with personalized learning options. After researching the numerous ways to complete this, we landed on a playlist option. The reasoning behind this is we wanted to make sure that our students were in a student-centered learning environment. If you walk into one of our classrooms on any given day, uh, it could look a little bit crazy at times, but really the things that you're gonna see are uh, gifted students being able to work at the pace that they work at. So they're not sitting and waiting for other students to finish. They're actually able to proceed at their own pace. It also gives us more time for small groups um, where we're centered and we're grabbing those groups and helping those kids really understand the concepts that maybe they're struggling with. And what we found is, those kids love to come back and really spend some time with us and to understand the concepts and maybe not in front of the whole group asking, asking the questions. Uh, we also try to teach the students how to monitor their own learning, how to set goals and how to accomplish those goals. Casey, if you can do the next slide, please. Uh, 
All right, students are given a playlist of assignments that are aligned to both our science curriculum and our CTE curriculum. Uh, they are given a certain number of assignments that they have to complete for the unit, and they are giving lots of different choices on learning styles. And we're going to go through some of those in just a second. Uh, students work at their own pace with a targeted due date. And one of the we do a lot of feedback from the students because we want to make sure that what we're doing in our classrooms is working for the kids. Uh, so one of the feedback that we got was some of our kids like didn't want to just be able to work all ed at the same time. Uh, they needed like a due date, like a calendar, like on this day, I want you to choose two assignments to do. And uh, that seemed to work really well. Casey, if you can click the playlist example for us. Perfect. So up at the top is our learning standards, which we display, of course, on the playlist, but then we also typically have that up on our boards behind us. Uh, we re reference that quite a bit in our classroom so the students really know exactly what they should be learning um, and should be able to explain that to anybody that comes into one of our rooms. We try to make it really simple. Uh, pick one from each section to complete. They have to complete five activities total on this playlist that we give them. We highlight the assignments that are required. Uh, those are the ones that we feel like they really, really need to know to be able to access the information. And then they have to take an assessment and their score. And then they also do like a self-reflection throughout this process. Uh, as you can see on the playlist, we have notes that we typically do in our classrooms together as a whole group. Uh, we give kids options to do those on their own, but a lot of students actually want, a, want us to lead that discussion. Uh, there's videos for them to choose through, readings, different activities, different labs that they complete, um, and then also different ways uh, to be creative. So um, if you wouldn't mind, Casey, just scrolling just real quick is it, okay. Yeah, so we try to make it really easy. Um, and this is the way that we've designed our playlist. There's lots of different ways to do that, but it seems to be working really well in our classroom. So I'm going to let Mr. Griffith take over. So Dr. Finch, thank you for reminding us that this needs to be short because you put junior high teachers in front of people and we have a tendency to maybe move on a little uh, longer than we should. Um, Casey, if you could scroll to the top, please. Um, I'm going to come back. If you notice at the bottom, there's assessment on the very bottom. And then if you scroll up just a little bit, um, you'll notice, uh, scroll down, I'm sorry, wrong way. I know what I mean to say, if you could scroll, there you go. And there's this part where I'm going to address student reflection also, but I'll do that. I want, to, want you to know that the assessment, one of the assessments we have in the student reflection, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. One of the student reflections is on our playlist. So Casey, if you could go to the next slide. So the practical part of our class is um, we give students, all three of us, one of the teachers is not here, Jill O'Brien is our third teacher and she's actually the, the girls golf coach. And I, I'm assuming that's why Mr. Thorner is not here because he's watching his daughter play golf at the state tournament. So congratulations to Campbell. Um, but we give our students a pre and post test before every unit. Each student, no matter whether it's in Mrs. Leverton, my classroom, Ms. O'Brien's, I'll get the same pre-test, I'll get the same post-test. Um, if you could click on the tracker, please, the, the link at the top. What we do is we, for every unit we have, we have anywhere between seven and 10 standards that the state sets up or the state uh, students uh, science standards that we, we give. Notice up here, we've, we've uh, combined a number of those together. And so what we do is we give students a pretest and every standard. So for example, in the first green box there, we combine standard one and six together. There are five questions for each of those standards. If a student happens to pass a standard with 85% or greater, then they can skip that work on the playlist and go to the next unit. We've designed our questions in a way that students have a very difficult time guessing answers. So if they get all five right, they, they've had the content, they know that. Um, Casey, if you can notice in the, the first standard, only two students pass with the 90% or greater. Could you scroll to the right just a little bit? Uh, going over to the seventh standard, if you notice, uh, we have a, a great students that have passed the standards. So students have the ability to move on, which creates um, a great opportunity for students to uh, move at a pace that they're comfortable with. Thank you. Could you go back to the slide, please, Casey? The original the slide you clicked on. There you go. Um, so
So in what we do is in the second bullet there, we continue to check students work. The great, the power we have as staff members now is as Jenna uh, talked a little bit about before, we're not so much the sage on the stage directing students. Uh, we have the great opportunity of really connecting with students of all levels. So as Jenna said, we might bring our ELL students back and work individually with them, or we might bring our students with IEPs back that are struggling with a little bit of reading. The greatest thing is though that I've spent in 32 years of teaching um, is that I rarely get to have opportunity to meet with our high level kids. This gives us a wonderful opportunity, not only to make connections, but to really talk to those high kids that may have questions that we don't, we're not addressing in class. There's times where Jen and I and Jill feel like we're simply one step ahead of those kids uh, at times. Um, so at bullet number three, so students, uh, they meet with us and then the students at the, at the end of their playlist, when they've completed everything, they take a short quiz. It's a, anywhere between a five to seven uh, question quiz on, Google's, on a, a Google document. And they have to pass that with 100%. Once they've done that, meet with us one-on-one. -on -one. We sit with those students. We talk about misconceptions they might have. We talk about questions they might have. We go through their assignments. And we're now familiar with the assignments and the questions where students might struggle with. So we have an opportunity to really sit with those students one-on-one -on -one and talk to them about those things. If we feel there's some concepts they haven't uh, mastered yet or have understanding with, we'll go back and ask them to rewrite or we go back to, through those concepts. However, once, once they're done with that playlist, and we're, we are satisfied with their progress, then those students will now go back and on that playlist bottom, there's a student evaluation. They have to go back now and use the concepts that they've learned and give us a five to seven sentence uh, evaluation of what they learned. So for example, in our first unit, it's all about the scientific method. So a student might take the variables that they learned in an experiment and, it, and they might expound on three variables they learned in an experiment and have to give us a detailed uh, explanation of that. Um, once they've done that, um, then they get to move on to the next, uh, they move on to the next standard or if they complete, if they've gone through and completed all the standards, then they take the post-test. When we first started this, we had students that were at, they got to the point where they were almost a month ahead of the rest of the class, which, which challenges us in a way to really keep up with those students. But the feedback we got, and we're big on feedback with students, the feedback we got is kids were excited about learning because they didn't feel like they had to wait for the rest of the class. They were challenged to move on. Students at the end of our first year that um, were almost four weeks ahead, and they, would have they, would, they were ready to complete the class uh, three to four weeks ahead. And we were working at the time when Chris Naismith was here, our CT director, on working at having those kids start a biology program to start for their freshman year in high school when biology was offered. Um, so, um, so we're big on data. So uh, if you could click on the very bottom link there, um, because we're big on data, I hope this shows what it does, good. So this happened to be one of my classes. We like to give data on pre and post tests. So you'll notice I have three categories of students there. Students that were, we would consider students, mainstream students. We had students that had IEPs, which were the modified students. And we have students that came into our class that didn't speak any English at all. And that was the last group. And you can see that the green represents passing what we would say is a standard four. Yellow would be a standard three. Red would be a standard two or one. And you can see that every group made growth. And that, that's uh, when you look at the very end, when we had, you know, these are students that didn't speak any English. So I often had to communicate through Google Translate to those students. Um, amazing growth they made. And again, we'd like to take credit for that, but it's more along the lines of student, feel, I, the feedback we got is our students felt empowered to learn. And that was exciting for us to, to see that and, and to see those students, even our students who are IEP, students who have IEPs. What we would do is one thing we did is on that playlist, students with IEPs or those students that were Spanish speaking, we would modify that. So we would go in if we had a reading, which were usually eight, nine or 10, uh, eighth, ninth or 10 grade level reading, we would go in and we'd modify it. So the, the Lexi level dropped to a, a level that they could understand and comprehend. So we actually made accommodations for all those students in a real life situation. And what was amazing is uh, it was exciting to see like our students who are IEP students who were reading at maybe second, third or fourth grade level having success. And it wasn't like we were just passing him. It wasn't like we were just giving him a pass. Our students earned the God and they earned the, 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 uh, the success that they have. So that's exciting for us to do. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please, Casey, the last slide there. So, um, 
Yeah, right there. So one thing that Jenna hit on is that we really believe in giving kids learning styles. Um, if you ever have an opportunity to meet my wife and I, my wife is a reader. She reads, she's voracious, she's, she's incredible. She loves to read and she learns by reading everything she does. On the other hand, for me, uh, I struggle with, re I get about five minutes into reading and I see all the squirrels and I'm forgetting that I have to go back and reread and reread and reread, right? No, I know none of you in here deal with that, but, I, but that was for me. So we, when we sat down and we designed our curriculum, we took the whole child in mind. So we looked at ways that we could accommodate all students. Some students are note takers. They love the written word. Some students like to do hands-on stuff. They love that and they learn that way. Some students like uh, activities that engage with, um, with things that are hands-on, connected to a video, or connected to a reading. So they were looking at those things uh, in real life situations. So we really feel like we accidentally stumbled across something that we see that kids are having success with. Um, and then the, there were two other things. The big thing is we always connect our students to a project that is going, something that's going on that we can connect to what's going on in the world. And so that was a big thing. That was a really big thing for us. That we wanted students not to just come into science and go, oh yeah, we learned about the scientific method. But we wanted our students to see, well, here's what's going on in cancer research. And this is how they use the scientific method in cancer, cancer research. My daughter-in-law happened to work as a, uh, a technician um, in a area where they were using the scientific method uh, to test for leukemia. And so I got to bring in a real world person, a real world situation in the classroom. And it was incredibly exciting. Um, the other thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to connect. We know that in the world today of STEM, that the idea of women and minorities have, it's a huge opportunity for women, especially in this, in the STEM field to have opportunities to work. And so we're trying to bring in into our readings, into people that come in the classroom. We're trying to bring in a wide variety of a, a variety of people to come in to say, hey, listen, this is who I am and this is what I had to do. And now let's see what the possibilities are for you. Because I, we all know those of us that have junior high kids, most of our students don't even want to, they can't even remember what they're doing tomorrow or yesterday. Uh, but we want kids to have a vision. Like we, we, we try to in our classroom, uh, do what we do with our own children. We want to give them vision and hope. And so we use this method to try to do that. So we really feel like we've stumbled across something that we love doing. We have success. We're not the people up talking. We give kids, we try to empower kids to be successful. So um, that's what we're doing in eighth grade science. That's wonderful. Let's give them a hand, everyone. That's so wonderful. So do we have any questions for, for Rick or Jenna? Yeah, here, Dave. How, how do you make sure that you don't lose a kid? It, you, you have like 25 to 30 kids in the classroom. They're all working at different levels. How do you make sure that the quiet one who may not read very good, but he's not gonna put his hand up. How, how do you make sure you don't lose those kids? That's a wonderful question. So we do it in a number of ways. So at the very beginning, I showed you the tracker that we use. So we're well aware right away of student scores and where students are at in the academic progress. So not only do we use that for ourselves, and the one thing I didn't share is that, that chart, we have that chart up in front of the room in a large post-it note. So students actually get to go up when they pass it, a unit or pass a standard, they get to go up and check and sign off themselves for the ownership. But to echo on what Jenna said, we know, we're well aware of where those students are. So we actually say, um, and, and let the students go to work, All Jen and I are, and Jill will actually go and say, hey, would you come back with you? And we meet with those students one-on-one -on -one, and we will meet with those students frequently. Um, I would say that we never, ever intentionally leave students behind and nobody ever would but we're actually proactive and actually getting those students to come back with us and what we found is when there are days when we might say okay anybody who wants to come back and work we find that even those shy students will actually eventually make it back to us there's no shame and there's no because there's no stigma in that they'll actually come back and they'll want and I don't know if they want time with us or they just want to learn I mean there's a whole situation so to answer your question we give opportunity and we're we're proactive in knowing which students need help does that, does that answer your question any other questions or comments all right well you can see why I asked them to present this evening <laughs> you can also see why we've had them lead professional development with our staff in the past and then also you can see why I asked them to come and present to our admin institute in August because they are doing universal design for learning. Maybe not that, but they're doing the principles of student choice, choice in how to access the content, choice on how they're monitoring their own progress, 
and choice right here as how they demonstrate their learning, how they show what they know. And so, um, you know, so districts oftentimes bring in the gurus from far away, but we have the experts right here in West Valley, right here in our classrooms. And I often think actually that, you know, if you picture where staff members and administration, they respect the work of their colleagues, then you're gonna actually have long lasting improvements when you have that culture of respect. And then you've got the experts right next door that you can call upon and you can build across the whole system, this excellence that we see in West Valley. So appreciate Rick and Jenna, your presentation this night and appreciate the continued work that you do. So let's give them a hand. Thank you, Thank you again. And as the board's coming up, just to share, we actually have other experts in the district as well that I've asked to share with our admin team this summer in August. So we have experts across the district, elementary, mid-level, and high school. And so that's a, a big part of our admin institute will be deepening the understanding of universal design for learning by, for our administrators so that can help lead that work. But knowing that we have these wonderful examples in our classrooms here in West Valley. All right, so that concludes the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Finch, and then thank both of you for that fine presentation, uh, very informative, and uh, we look forward to future success and results. All right, moving on to item eight on the agenda, approval of consent agenda. I'm going to recommend that we take all of these items unless someone wants to break something out. Uh, budget status report, is that from the last meeting? No, they're, all, they're all part of the um, consent agenda. So do we want to, in lieu of the fact that we're going to not do item nine? Right, so you can do the consent agenda altogether. Okay, do we want to do that one with it? I guess so. It's all it's item all, eight. Okay, all yeah. item eight. Okay, then uh, I'll go ahead and take a motion for approval of the consent agenda as presented. So moved. All right, we have a motion to approve. Uh, all those in favor signify, signify by saying aye. 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 All the same sign, motion carries. So that again would be 8A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. and F, right? Approval of leave requests. Mm -hmm. All right, um, again, we have a section for public comments. This is supposed to be of discussion items, but this is an item that we are tabling to the next meeting. But given that we have a couple of minutes, if there's anybody that wanted to make one last comment that didn't sign up, all right, we'll take one. Oh, I'm not going to come talk to you. Yeah. And again, just a reminder, the same limitations will apply. Board, um, Don Kirby. Uh, earlier today, I had uh, emailed Dr. Finch uh, just with a, with a quick uh, take on uh, the meeting of last week. I'll just read it real quick. I uh, said, Dr. Finch, I reviewed the response to public comments attachment and don't necessarily find that the questions posed by the community that spoke either in person or Zoom on March 10th were addressed. I said, if one were to merely view only the documentation that was included in tonight's agenda, one would conclude that there would be very little feedback on the gender inclusive policy and procedure, which we all know is not so. So uh, I had listed uh, the 13 questions from last week's meeting from the community members that my expectation will be answered, uh, hopefully uh, by the 14th. Um, Dr. Mm -hmm. Finch, could you confirm that these questions that I had uh, given you that were basically fielded by the community uh, will be answered uh, prior to the, third, uh, the, the 14th of June? And um, I'd like that um, there were questions from uh, Mr. Borden on, um, 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 yeah, the review of um, 
will each members of the board provide a written response regarding the policy prior to the 14th? Uh, there was a question, uh, if sex ed is being taught at the elementary schools, why do we have books in the library that promote gen transgender rights? Um, there was a question of, uh, as far as why did uh, the board not provide gender bathrooms at Summit View in Apple Valley if it knew that the RCW was law some two and a half years ago. So I had listed the questions that I got or that I gleaned from the uh, YouTube meeting. And I want to make sure that um, those questions will be addressed as well as the young lady who mentioned that uh, her emails to the board members have gone un unanswered. So all I have. All right, thank you for your comment. So with that, we're going to move on to the other part of the agenda, action items, approval of travel requests. Uh, again, I, this is an area where you could take all three of these, unless somebody would like to break them out and have further discussion about them, any of the board members. Otherwise, I'll take I'll, a motion. I'll move that we approve the travel request for Drake Weeks and Dr. Finch. There's one for Stacy Drake as well. I said that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, we have a motion to approve the travel request. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Travel request approved. All right, moving on. Item 12 on the agenda, items arising. Does anyone have anything uh, up here? Any of the board members or Dr. Finch? I, I have a couple. Uh, after reading the, the board reports, and uh, I remember in the days when I was a, a principal and Friday afternoon of the week before the week before the Tuesday meeting, somebody would call me and say, you have to have a board report by, by Monday so we can get it printed mm -hmm. and how quickly things had to get done. They, these reports were done very well. We really could see that people were not putting it off to the last minute to get their reports in. And I, and I like you to share that with your principals. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Two things that I saw at a tandem, we've been talking about inclusion, how about the last two, three years, Luke, we've had a committee going, we've had a lot of things involved with talking about inclusive practices uh, in a tandem's report about how they are actually taking kids from the developmental learning center classroom and they are in the regular ed classrooms. One of them at least half a day. So instead of just, talking about, which is what we've been doing mainly. They're actually doing it at a tandem and he was very positive in the experience for not only the DLC kid, but the regular kids too. It's nice to see somebody taking action. And it's not the only place that teachers are taking action, but it was the one listed in on the report. And again, I really appreciate somebody taking the chance and going through. The only way we're gonna learn how to do this right is to do it. And as we do it, we'll learn what mistakes we make and we'll modify, but we have got to do it first. And then we'll go from there. And i am nice to see that Nick is doing that. At the high school, if you look at our years, it's been right on that whole, but uh, the last five, four or five years, you look at our juniors in high school, when we estimate how many kids are gonna be the next grade, we usually take like the sixth grade. Well, we assume that's gonna be the same as plus maybe 2% and like that. And we just add a percentage to what's there the year before. At Southmore level, invariably, we have a number of kids at Southmore level. When they hit junior, it's a big drop. There's a major drop at, at the junior year, kids drop out of school. And that's a pattern for West Valley. And I assume it's probably everywhere, but it's been a pattern for a long time. At the high school this year, uh, they had teachers volunteer during their prep to work with Southmore kids on credit for Trebo during school. They used their prep time to do it. And those South, and they focused on Southmores, and, which is great. And they saw great results. They have kids who were making up one or two credits. This is the end of the school year. Could make up one or two credits. 
the odds are those kids who have made up those credits this year because of the teacher effort will be there next fall. They're not gonna be the ones that get discouraged and don't show up. They're gonna be there next fall. And it was another a great idea uh, that you know we've been we've seen that problem for years, and actually now Ben has done something about it. And I appreciate the effort of the high school, and I really appreciate the high school staff. They have prep periods for a reason. You know, there's a lot of work involved with prep periods. You need to get ready for your next classes. They they gave up their prep periods in order to do this, and uh, much admiration goes to the staff and to Ben for addressing the situation and. From what he said in the report, next year they figured out how to staff it in a way that does not take teachers out of their preps, but they're still going to staff so they have credit, uh, credit retrieval classes during the school day at the high school. But a great, a great idea and something that we've needed for years. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jager. Mr. Meyer, any comments? Not at this time. I think we're doing All right. Good. Thank you. Um, I also have no comments um, for items arising. So item 13 on the agenda reports. Dr. Finch, any reports besides the superintendent's reports? Let's see. Yeah, Mr. Jagger did a nice job highlighting the high quality job of the report. So I appreciate the principals and their work to share at the from the school level what's happening and it really keeps us all informed. So I appreciate that work. And then superintendent's report. Uh, we had posted that on the website, but just wanted to share with you again that uh, West Valley is the only school system in the nation that was recognized as a lighthouse system for early learning by AASA. That's the superintendent's organization, their national organization. Uh, as a result of that, we've been asked to present in Washington, DC at the end of June. So uh, it's very exciting to be able to share the good work that's happening in West Valley and share that at a national level. I have. Uh, thank you, Dr. Finch. And again, Moving on to the last, or one of next to the last items on the agenda here, board reports, board development. Yeah, I had the, uh, the opportunity to attend that conference on uh, early learning and found it to be a, a very rewarding experience. And with our own um, Stacy Drake and, and several of our teachers presented, and having gone to a lot of those conferences over the years, I was really impressed at the quality of the presentation and the amount of information that I received in two and a half hours. It was phenomenal. And I think that everybody in the district can be very proud of our educators and leadership and um, taking the early learning challenge, taking the bull by the horns, I guess, and running with it. It's been a very successful program and it is recognized nationally. The only one that was recognized. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a, a very enjoyable experience and I'm glad to and proud to say, sit up here and say that I was able to attend and, and partake in the, the furthering of that endeavor. Well, thank you for that, Mr. Myers. And when I uh, present, I always tell the people that we're presenting to that what they need to do is exactly what Dave Jagger just said. They need to start. Start now. Wherever you're at, <laughs> start working on it and then have continuous improvement and you'll get better year after year. So, you know, we really made it a focus about 11 years ago and we've been getting better every year since then. So that's exactly like you said, you got you to start. So start now. And you'll learn as you go and you'll get better, but you just got to start on the work. So appreciate um, all the staff to um, have our outreach with community partners so that it's more than just the school system. It's all of our community partners as well working together to ensure that students and families are welcomed as they come into kindergarten and they're ready to learn. And then we'll be able to keep them on a trajectory of success all throughout their educational career and beyond. So that's, that's our work and uh, we'll continue to do it. And like I shared, uh, earlier, we do have improvement goals for next year with early learning. We want to expand the work that we have with our partnership with Epic to uh, reach families that are birth to age three. And, um, and so we look forward to continuing that work with that continuous improvement mindset. 
Okay, thank you, Dr. Finch. So with that, um, I'll just make one last comment before we adjourn. Again, I'd like to thank the members of the community. I know I, many of you come quite regularly. I, we, we really appreciate that. And please continue to be involved, attend the meetings and present your, your thoughts, your input. So thank you for coming tonight. Uh, we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting at this point. It's 8, 11 p.m. Again, Tuesday, May 24th. Thank you. Don't forget, uh, Mr. Digger, we have some